long time ago, in a nice quiet village, there lived a wealthy merchant. He lived there together with his daughter, who was named Bawang Puti. This merchant's wife had long since passed away. The merchant was very fond of his daughter because she was obedient and kind-hearted. One day, as he came home from traveling, he brought a woman and her daughter along with him. He wanted to marry this woman. So, Bawang Puti now had a stepmother and a stepsister, who was named Bawang Mera. When her father went to trade, her stepmother and Bawang Mera would treat Bawang Puti like a servant. Bawang Puti did all the work that was ordered by her stepmother. She cleaned the house, cooked, washed clothes, and looked for firewood. If Bawang Puti's work went wrong, her stepmother would punish her by not feeding her. Every morning, her stepmother and Bawang Mera took turns shouting, Hey, Bawang Puti, wash my clothes! Not yet finished washing clothes, Bawang Puti would then be called by her stepmother. Bawang Puti! Prepare breakfast now! We are hungry! Uh, okay, Mom. Because Bawang Puti worked so hard and was punished so harshly, her body became thinner. One day, Bawang Puti's father returned home and fell ill. He was very ill and Bawang Puti was very sad because of it. She never left her father alone. However, God decided differently. Bawang Puti's father died. Father, don't leave Bawang Puti, father. While Bawang Puti wept and cried, her stepmother and Bawang Mera were excited because the property and house of Bawang Puti's father now belonged to them. Look, Bawang Mera! He finally died! Yes! Mom, we will be rich! Bawang Puti's life was miserable after her father died. She no longer had her father to love and comfort her. Her stepmother and Bawang Mera further tortured her. Bawang Puti tried to be patient, but sometimes she would cry at night. Lord, please help me. Why are they always evil to me? One day, Bawang Puti went to the river to wash clothes. She was sleepy and hungry, and her body was weak. While washing, Bawang Puti didn't realize that her stepmother's favorite shawl had washed away. When she put all the clothes back into the basket, she was surprised to find her stepmother's scarf was not there. Mother's favorite scarf is gone. Oh no, it's drifting down the river. What should I do? I daren't go home. Mother will scold me. Finally, Bawang Puti decided to go back down to the river to look for her stepmother's scarf. In the middle of the road, she met a farmer who was washing his cow. Uncle, did you see a red scarf floating down the river? The farmer nodded and replied, Red shawl. Hmm, oh yes, I saw it. The scarf was taken by an old grandmother who was washing clothes by the river. The old grandmother's house is on the mountain. Bawang Puti immediately headed up the mountain. There, she found a wooden house. Bawang Puti knocked on the door of the house. Excuse me, Grandma. Did you find my mother's red scarf? 
the old grandmother came out of the house and greeted Bawang Puti. Hi, dear. Let's go in. What's your name? My name is Bawang Puti, Grandma. The old grandmother would give the red scarf back with one condition. Bawang Puti must help her first. Bawang Puti agreed. All day she helped the grandmother cook, look for firewood, clean the house, and wash clothes. For Bawang Puti, all this work was easy because she was used to doing it. Finally, it was time for Bawang Puti to leave for home. The grandma gave her the shawl. Bawang Puti, this is the red scarf you were looking for. Oh, I want to give you a gift. A pumpkin for you, because you helped me. Choose which one you like. On the table, there were both small and large pumpkins. Bawang Puti chose a small pumpkin because she also had to carry a basket full of clothes home. Hmm, I choose the small one, Grandma. Okay, take this little pumpkin. But remember, you can't open the pumpkin until you get home. Understand? Well, Grandma, I will do everything you said. Arriving at home, Bawang Puti was scolded by her stepmother and Bawang Mera. Where have you been, Bawang Puti? How dare you go out without my permission? Forgive me, Mother. I... I was... Stop! Enough, Bawang Puti! We don't need your excuses! They continued to beat her. Then they saw the pumpkin brought by Bawang Puti. Cut the pumpkin and cook it! We are starving because of you! Bawang Puti took the knife and split the pumpkin. What a surprise! The pumpkin was full of sparkling and expensive jewelry. Huh! Where did you get the pumpkin? Bawang Puti then told them everything. Oh, Bawang Puti, you should have chosen a large pumpkin. It would have had more jewelry. Hearing the words of Bawang Mira, the stepmother finally got the idea. Looks like I have an idea. <laughs> The next day, the stepmother and Bawang Mira went to the river. They deliberately washed away the red scarf. Then secretly, they followed the veil as it washed away. Sure enough, the red scarf was picked up by the old grandmother. The stepmother and Bawang Mira followed the old grandmother, who went up the mountain. As they walked, Bawang Mira complained about how far it was. Ugh, I'm tired. Let's just go home. Bawang Mira, be patient. Soon we will get even more jewelry than Bawang Puti. But I'm tired, Mom. I said be patient. Arriving at the old grandmother's house, the stepmother and Bawang Mira knocked on the door. The old grandmother welcomed them warmly. Then, the stepmother and Bawang Mira pretended to be sad and asked about the red scarf. Dear grandmother, did you find my mother's red scarf? Oh yes, it just so happens that grandma found it on the river. Just like with Bawang Puti, the grandmother would give them the shawl if they helped her. The only way to get the pumpkin was to work to help the old grandma, but they still couldn't stop complaining. 
Oh, I'm so tired. If it weren't for the pumpkins, I wouldn't do this. Yes, I'm also tired. Hopefully, there will be even more jewelry inside this pumpkin. <laughs> Finally, Bawang Mera and the stepmother finished their work at the old grandmother's house and said goodbye. The old grandmother gave the shawl to Bawang Mera and her mother. On the table, there were two pumpkins, one large and one small. Choose one pumpkin as a gift for me. And of course, the stepmother and Bawang Mera chose the largest pumpkin. Of course, I choose the big one, Grandma. Yeah, choose the big one. Remember, don't open the pumpkin before you get home. Yes, Grandma, that's for sure. We'll go home first, Grandma. Bawang Mera and her mother did not obey the advice of the grandmother. On the way, the stepmother split the big pumpkin. They were impatient to get their hands on the jewelry inside. Mom, let's just open this pumpkin now that old grandmother will not know. Yeah, let's open it. I'm also curious. However, they were in for quite a surprise. Because inside the pumpkin were venomous animals, such as snakes, scorpions, spiders, and centipedes. They were both bitten by a snake. Oh, what is this? Where is the jewelry? Why do you have these animals inside? Because they were still in the middle of the forest, no one came to help them. The stepmother and Bawang Mira died from the snake bite. Their greed brought them to disaster. Meanwhile, Bawang Puti lived happily ever after, the jewelry given by the old grandmother making her rich. She continued her father's business and enjoyed the fruits of her obedience and kindness. Oh.